We will now customize and generate a prototype for each audience that we've been creating notes for so far. We will be introduced to the generate HTML dialog, learning how we can create and maintain HTML prototype configurations. Up until now, the previews that we've been seeing are prototypes using default settings. If you want to share your prototype, you'll need to create the physical HTML, CSS and JavaScript files to share with your colleagues. Click on Publish from the menu and you'll see Generate HTML Files. Before we go ahead and do that though, we're going to think best practice. We should create and save two generator configurations, one for the designers and one for the project managers. So with this feature we can store the appropriate prototype generation settings for each audience. We need to go to more generators and configurations to do this. As you can see we have a couple of default configurations for HTML prototypes and Word documentation as well as a CSV report generator which is a useful new feature for version 7, great for tracking issues uh, but not something we've got time to get into here. Let's add a new HTML prototype, we'll name this Visual Designers and we'll do the same for our project managers audience. The default configuration is named HTML1. You can choose to set any other configuration as default by clicking set as default here. If you click on generate prototype files from the publish menu it will generate the default configuration. Next we'll hit generate, a bit of a misnomer here though because it actually launches the generate prototype dialog where you can edit or save the config before it actually generates it. You'll arrive at the first step general of the generation dialog. Here you can choose where you want your files to be generated. Uh, quite useful if you've got a dedicated drive or folder for that team. Uh, you can choose which browser to open with. Uh, on this point it's always a good idea to use the same browser on the same operating system to work on and view your prototypes. The, the experience can differ between browsers and operating systems. Actually, prototypes were never required to be cross-browser, so don't expect them to be. You can opt to hide the sitemap too, which can be a good idea because you don't want people becoming too reliant on the sitemap. That is not how an end user is going to experience your carefully crafted product. Pages. You can choose to generate a subset of pages. I've used this before to keep reviewers focused on a specific section of the design useful. Page notes, here is the key point of the demo. We want to include the page notes we created earlier for the designers in this profile, so we'll uncheck the irrelevant project manager notes. Widget notes, we have a new option for version 7 where you can use a name instead of the note icon we saw earlier. I think this is really useful but you need to make sure that you have given widgets names or you'll just get an un unhelpful question mark displayed in the prototype. Again we can cherry pick which widget level notes we want to include for the designers in this prototype configuration. We have options for showing information about interactions. We'll leave this as is for this audience. You can add a logo and caption here. These elements will appear in the collapsible sitemap panel on the left. I think the intention is to permit you to display your business's logo here as opposed to the client's logo. Web fonts is a new addition for version 7. This permits you to use a font on a public facing server, either using a link to a CSS file with the font face specification or you can put the font face specification in line here. Uh, a service like Google Fonts is ideal for this. When you close this dialog, the font should be available for use, although you may need to restart Axia in order to see the font. 
Font mapping permits you to use a system font in Axure, which is then replaced by the web font when the prototype is viewed. There's a thread on the forums about these techniques. Uh, a quick Google search will bring this up. Okay, back to Axure and the mobile device settings. You can find the checkbox to include viewport tag here. The rule of thumb here is to check this and leave the width as device hyphen width. This should permit the prototype to be viewed in most devices. We'll come to some techniques for designing responsively and dealing with different devices later. Okay, the advanced options. There are a few extra options here that we don't have time to go into. Um, Discuss provides the new feature of being able to comment directly into prototypes. This is useful. You you previously used to have to generate a specification document and uh, I'd, I'd have collaborators comment in this document. This is a big improvement. Uh, I'd love this at the widget level though. Um, listen up please, Axure guys. To use the Discuss feature, you'll need to publish the prototype on share.axure.com. This feature provides a place where anyone who you give the URL to uh, can view the prototype and comment. Uh, we'll come to that next. First, we'll generate our prototype. This also saves your settings as you go, so you could close now if you want to. It's, it's all saved. And we have the prototype. In this version, you will find that it only includes the notes specific to the design audience that we've specified. Okay, we could go back and edit the project manager's uh, configuration. However, that is not a good use of our time. Uh, we've learned how we can do that. So um, let's just now go and look at the files we've created um, in the directories. Axio creates a bunch of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. To open the prototype from here, you should double click on index.html. Because of the large numbers of files, it's best to zip these up if you want to share them via email or, or any other way. Sharing via share.axio.com is by far the easiest way of sharing. Uh, that's coming up in the next video.